Uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, is uh, the third highest ranking American politician. Uh, she is second in line to the presidency if something happened to both Biden and, um, and Kamala. Kamala, uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi, God forbid, would become president of the United States. But uh, she is horrible. Um, she is exactly the kind of politician one's hate the most. Uh, she doesn't really believe in anything. She has a, a, a generally uh, leftist, statist, uh, authoritarian attitude. She does not believe in the Constitution. She does not believe in, uh, in, the, in really the rule of law in the sense of, of individual rights. She is, uh, like most politicians, a, a dishonest um, and, uh, and full of herself. But she, during a trip to Asia, has decided to visit Taiwan. Now, no American senior politician has visited Taiwan since the late 1990s, when, again, chairman of the House of Representatives visited Taiwan back then, because back in the Carter administration, coming out of negotiations that started under uh, Richard Nixon, who visited uh, who horrifically, and, uh, and uh, horrifically and, and, I don't know, uh, just horrifically visited China and met with Mao Zedong, I think one of the most horrific acts of an American president. Um, uh, following the negotiations that followed that and the recognition of China, of the United States, and the United States of China, and opening up of embassies and opening up of trade, uh, as part of all that, the United States agreed that Taiwan, uh, that it would never recognize Taiwan as an independent state, independent country, separate from China. Indeed, the United States committed to closing its embassy in Taiwan, replacing its embassy in Taiwan with an embassy in Beijing. And while the United States uh, did not withdraw its support of Taiwan, its arming of Taiwan, its uh, all kinds of other ties with Taiwan, its political, quote, diplomatic ties were non-existent, according to this treaty it has with China. And therefore, uh, a senior politician, American politician, going to China, Taiwan and meeting with the president of Taiwan is, in a sense, a legitimization of the Taiwanese regime. Now, notice how significant the bully pulpit is, how significant moral sanction is, moral sanction is, to the Chinese. That is, notice that the, um, that the Chinese are really pissed off, and not a little bit. They're majorly pissed off. This is really, really important to them, even though it doesn't change the balance of power. It doesn't, we haven't sold, you know, better weapons to Taiwan. It hasn't given them a nuke. It's just... You know, the, the, the Speaker of the House going and shaking hands and having a conversation with the President of Taiwan, that is causing the Chinese to be apoplectic and threatening war. Now, that shows you how powerful, how powerful moral sanction is, how powerful moral condemnation, moral action really is. In many ways, if one acts, speaks in the right way, if one is principled, then often that can avert war. That is more threatening to a regime like China than an actual war is. So I think that's, it's incredibly powerful to see this. So imagine an American president who have to con actually condemn China for the right reasons. Imagine an American president who actually stood up to China. Imagine an American president who shut down the embassy in China and brought everybody home. Imagine an American president who condemned to hell the Chinese for what they did in Hong Kong and offered all residents of Hong Kong visas to the United States. Imagine how that would have been completely, completely demoralized the Chinese regime. 
you know, I don't know why this always comes back to Trump, but Dank YT wants to make it about Trump. Trump did not do this. Trump attacked the Chinese because they were, quote, an economic threat. Trump attacked the Chinese because they traded with us. And trade is bad. Having a trade deficit is bad. Trump never condemned Hong Kong. Trump never condemned what they were doing to their own people. Trump never condemned the lack of free speech. Trump never condemned the fact that it's a dictatorship. Trump never condemned the fact that there were no individual rights in China. Indeed, Trump was super friendly to Xi many times. Trump said, oh, I've got a fantastic relationship with Xi. I, I, I get along fantastic with Xi. Xi and me, we're best buddies. No, counter to what everybody believes, Trump was super weak on China. Super weak on China. Trade, 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 trade. He focused on the thing that doesn't matter and ignored the things that do matter. Now, every American president does the same thing. But there's a mythology about Trump being tough on China, tough on Russia. Like Trump just said in an interview that if he was president, he said again, uh, Russia would have never invaded Ukraine. And there's an element of truth to that. If Trump were president, Ukraine would have given Russia everything it wants. It would have committed not to joining NATO. Trump would have twisted Zelensky's hands to do that. And they would have just handed Ukraine on a silver platter to Russia. And therefore, they wouldn't have needed to have a war because Putin would have gotten everything he wanted. That's what would have happened if Trump were president. And Trump now says there shouldn't be a war. Uh, Ukrainians should just give Russia everything they want. So to hell with, uh, uh, you know, uh, sovereignty for Ukraine. Tell with Ukrainian interests. That's not a lie. Go read Trump right now. So, uh, uh, you know, would have never, it's true, there would have never been a war because Putin would have just been handed Ukraine on a silver platter with keys attached. Um, all right, so good for Pelosi for going to Taiwan, sticking a, a, a little finger in, um, in the eye of the Chinese, taking a stand, talking about freedom, talking about democracy, talking about, you know, the vote. And, and the fact that Taiwan is one of the freest countries in the world, has a great economy, is, is, is prospered, is incredibly wealthy, even as compared to China on a per capita GDP significantly richer than China. Taipei is this amazing city. And good for her for standing up to the Chinese. Chinese will not do anything. Um, there will not be war over Pelosi going to Taiwan. The Chinese, uh, uh, you know, have a long-term plan. They're not going to change the long-term plan because of Pelosi. They're going to make a lot of noise. They'll fly a lot of airplanes. They'll put out a bunch of ships. Maybe they'll take some insignificant island. But war is not going to happen over what Pelosi did. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.